Good evening, guys. Hank here, back at it with another video, and this one is another one of the punishment variety because for the second consecutive year, I finished dead last in the review and preview quick picks for the 2022 NFL season. And so this year, my epic punishment shout out to Fonz for suggesting this, is to create a Mount Rushmore for one of my most hated teams. And with opening day being about 20 days away and with hitting for the cycle being less than two weeks away, I figured it would only fitting for it would only be fitting for me to be presented to you the Boston Red Sox Mount Rushmore and why they're bet pretty much better than every single Yankee. So here we go. The first guy I'm going to bring up in this Mount Rushmore, none other than Teddy Ballgame. Now, Ted Williams was the greatest hitter that ever lived. And let's put all this Babe Ruth talk to rest. Was Babe Ruth an amazing hitter and a legend in the game of baseball. Absolutely. But Ted Williams had a 344 career average. That is two points higher than Babe Ruth. He also had a higher career average than Lou Gehrig, Mickey Mantle, and Joe DiMaggio. So I think right there, you can make a case that Ted Williams was better than all those guys, at least if we're talking that about that department. However, what makes him stand out? Well, for one thing, besides being an amazing hitter, he had a 400 season, which no player in Yankee history has ever had. He also hit 388 in 1957, which was his age 39 season. How many other players have done that? Not just in Yankee history, but in baseball history. He was an American hero. I mean, the only reason he doesn't have 3,000 hits and probably isn't closer to Babe Ruth in the home run list is because he missed several years of his prime while he served in during both World War II and the Korean War. So there's no telling how much better his career could have been if not for the wars, but w at the end of the day, he's an American hero. And not to mention Derek Jeter may have that walk off hit to have end his career. Ted Williams had a home run in his final at bat. Again, not too many, uh, not too many, if any Yankee legends have done that. So his baseball career pretty much went out with the bang. Although we'll pretend his years as managing the Washington senators didn't really happen but that's a story for another day ted williams has to be number one on this boston red sox mount rushmore and he is better than every yankee due to those reasons that i just named despite the fact that he didn't win a world series but that's not his fault number two carl yastrzemski yaz replaced ted if there was anyone who is worthy of replacing ted williams in the left field it was obviously Yaz, and he was pretty much right on par with uh, Mickey Mantle. I mean, he won a triple crown. He won more batting titles than Mickey Mantle, three to his one, seven gold gloves. And what makes Yaz stand out with the Red Sox is he had well over 3,000 hits and played 23 years with the Red Sox. No Yankees ever lasted that long with their team. Even Derek Jeter couldn't make it to 20 to 23 years. And unlike a lot of the Yankee legends, you never really heard any problems with his behavior with regards to Carl Yastrzemski. I mean, because let's face it, Joe DiMaggio, while he was a war hero, he also wasn't the best husband to Marilyn Monroe. Carl and uh, Mickey Mantle, as you know, was a raging alcoholic. Carl Yastrzemski never had any of that baggage with him. So in addition to being a great ball player, he was a decent man. But what also makes him stand out is in his Triple Crown season, 
he essentially saved the Boston Red Sox as a franchise. Why do I say that? Because, you know, you look at where the Red Sox were. Fans weren't coming to the games. This was the impossible dream season. He carried them to the pennant. And let me read out his numbers for you because they were pretty darn good. He had a batting average of that season, 326. He had 44 home runs, 121 RBIs. Without This is 1967 alone. Without him, they do not go to the pennant. And as great as a lot of the Yankees were, I don't think there's any Yankee that had a single singular impact on his team's pennant winning season. And again, who cares if they lost the World Series? He essentially saved baseball in Boston. And so Yaz pretty much has to be there. And while he may not have been as good of a hitter as Ted Williams, he was definitely one of the better players fielders at least if we're talking about guys who played left field for the Red Sox and again those are some accomplishments that you did not see for many Yankees now we go to number three and again Pedro Martinez he had by far the greatest two-year stretch in baseball history I mean from 98 through 2004, you could argue he was the best pitcher during the steroid era. And look at those two those seasons he posted in 1999 and 2000. That two-year stretch has not been matched by a single Yankees pitcher. And in other words, everyone was his daddy. Oh, and did I even mention that he struck out 17 Yankees on September 10th? 1999 and mind you this was a yankee team that was coming off one of the greatest seasons of all time so that's pretty impressive in and of itself and let's just say without him i don't think the red Sox go on to break their curse in 2004 and look you can say what you want about the incident with don zimmer pedro martinez has to be in the conversation for one of the top 10 greatest pitchers of all time and look you know what the sad truth is? There, there are no Yankees that are in that conversation. So there you go. But before I get into the last member of this Mount Rushmore, let's go to some honorable mentions, shall we? We got Wade Boggs, who was another one of the greatest hitters of all time. I mean, 1985 through 1988, he was consistently in the 360s. And if you want to argue about the best hitters from the 1980s, his only competition is really Tony Gwynn, and I'd probably put Tony Gwynn ahead of him. That's either here nor there. And also, I just need to mention, he appeared on um, It's Always Sunny, drank 70 beers on a plane ride. That's legendary stuff. So honorable mention to Wade Boggs there. And yeah, he was a Red Sox. He was a Red Sox lifer. Okay, I thought he was a Red Sox. Uh, we'll pretend that picture never happened. Uh, speaking of... Red Sox selections. I also have to mention Roger Clemens, who is another one of the greatest pitchers of all time. He had 20 strikeouts in a game twice. And in 1986, he had an MVP like season. And he also won three of his seven Cy Young awards in Boston. And again, he left that city as a hero and his reputation was pretty much intact his reputation was intact. Oh, come on. I said his reputation was, oh. okay, let's move on. We'll pretend his Yankee career never happened and that he retired scot-free. No, sir. Okay, let's move on. Nomar Garcia Ponner, Para, another honorable mention. 372 batting average in 2000. He was one of the greatest shortstops. And personally, I really liked Nomar Garcia Para. I think if he had stayed healthy, he probably, if he wouldn't have been on par with Derek Jeter, you could at least argue that maybe he would have been better than Jeter. Now, whether he would be better than A-Rod, I don't know. But then again, A-Rod was on the juice. So maybe, just maybe. But you can't help but love his little routine that he did while adjusting his gloves right before he went to the batter's box. The guy was, the guy was pretty fun to watch. And... 
I would put Manny Ramirez as an honorable mention because even with the steroids too, he still hit 555 home runs. He was another big part in breaking the curse, so to speak. And hey, Manny Ramirez is still getting paid by the Red Sox today. I forgot to put a slide up for him, but just wanted to go on that little brief tangent after talking about Nomar, who in reality actually is one of the few Red Sox I truly, truly appreciated. But Let's go on to the last member of the Mount Rushmore, and you guys pretty much know it's Big Poppy. I mean, come on. Greatest DH in baseball history. Not just forget Yankees. Greatest DH in baseball history. Clutch hitter in the postseason. He hit well over 600 in the 2013 World Series, and that was a Red Sox team that on paper wasn't even that good. And speaking of being clutch in the postseason, I mean, he's pretty much put them on his back during the 2004 ALCS with that walk-off home run in game four. And of course, the real reason he's better than any Yankee or at least any Yankee in the 21st century. More rings. Only time the Yankees won that I can legitimately remember 2009. Whereas I remember all four world series that the Red Sox won. So there you have it. This is my, Boston Red Sox, Mount Rushmore, and I hope you enjoyed me going on, rambling on my historic tangents there, but um, that's pretty much all I have with regards to the punishment. So once again, the moral of the story, don't lose quick picks or else you're going to have to spend like 10 minutes of your life talking about a team you hate or doing some other form of cruel and unusual punishment, just like I did. But at the end, I will see you guys later. and. Um, Best of luck to everyone in the quick picks, and I hope you learn your lesson from watching me have to talk about some of my, my one of my most hated teams. So, peace out, guys.